My name is Santiago Giron. Uh, I am engineer agronomist, and uh, I work in Coffee Foundation uh, uh, of Rural Development, Fun Cafe. And uh, uh, this is in uh, Guatemala. Uh, who knows Guatemala? Okay, Guatemala is in the uh, Central America, and uh, uh, this project uh, uh, introduced <coughs> the technology in the uh, schools. Uh, I am very happy because today I have the opportunity to uh, speak uh, about the Yerba Buena uh, School. This is in, into San Pedro Pinola community, and this is school is in a, a dry uh, zone, and uh, in this zone is uh, very very hot. And uh, when uh, before is uh, uh, coming in in this uh, school, is um, uh, the students uh, don't know. Uh, how to produce vegetables, and uh, uh, they need that in this moment uh, uh, implementing pro productive uh, projects, and um <coughs> but uh, uh, they don't know uh, money to investment in in this uh, school garden. So. Uh, the students uh, contact directly uh, the technica, techni technician campus and uh, uh, Fun Cafe supported by supported uh, campus project uh, uh, in, in some activities. Uh, teach uh, the students uh, how to uh, install this technology. Uh, how produce uh, the vegetables with uh, organic farmers farming, and uh, uh, teach uh, security, uh, is food security and nutritional, uh, 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 sexual reproductive help, uh, and uh, uh, water drinking safe. Uh, and other, other uh, uh, teams. <coughs> well, uh, I I I say you that the, it it no easy because uh, uh, work uh, with the students is very difficult for different reasons. Uh, one reason is uh, that the students not not money to investment in this in this uh, school garden and uh, the students uh, don't uh, time to investment in uh, these activities because uh, she need to complete uh, some hours teach, uh, learning <coughs> and uh, uh, and uh, they don't no 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 they don't know they don't know how to produce this. So, uh, uh, okay, the, uh, uh, after campus, after campus, the students uh, uh, now, uh, now, <laughs> uh, know this uh, production with the, with the technology, with uh, farming, uh, organic farming, uh, they know uh, uh, nutritional. Uh, they they know um, safe nutritional, safe food and nutritional and uh, sexual reproductive uh, helps, uh, and they uh, know how use this technology uh, and and how produce uh, and consumption these vegetables uh, and use uh, uh, other recourse uh, of this community to improve uh, 
your uh, your food. Um, in uh, I I very very happy because uh, ho when uh, introduce the technology in this uh, age, um, we working more uh, quickly because uh, uh, when uh, when in in this community it's very difficult introduce the technology because the people uh, all uh, resist to in to introduce uh, some improve uh, in in these areas uh, so uh, we are completely uh, 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 I completely sure that uh, uh, this is a, a good uh, tool uh, for uh, uh, development uh, in this community. Uh, so uh, I I I will uh, I I can't uh, no I I. I I want to explain more about uh, the uh, the uh, English non m okay. <laughs> my language is uh, is other as, so it's difficult thank you <laughs> ah, sorry sorry uh, I have the pleasure to present my boss <laughs> uh, so very careful very careful <laughs> Thank you very much, Santiago. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great pleasure to share you this morning about our work. My name is uh, Minor Maldonado. I am executive director of um, Coffee Foundation for Rural Development, Funcafe. Funcafe as a social branch of the Guatemalan National Coffee Association. Funcafe work in three different strategic areas. Education, health, and food and nutritional security. Its campus project in Guatemala below, developed below the food security areas, where the micro irrigation system represented innovative vehicle for to improve the food security. The interventions, the intervention was integrated for to promote the, the, the most impact in the human um, rural um, for to to take a, a behavior change. How they can to improve their living condition. In order to integrate uh, different uh, um, actions and strategies, we work in five important points. The first one was to integ the integration of technical components, education, health, and food safety. The second one was the methodological approach with using learning by doing system. The number three is working with women because the women in Guatemala rural has a very important role to decide what kind of uh, food the family will eat. The other, the other important uh, point was the attention, differentiate attention to three different cultural areas. And, and the last ones, the edu formal education in food security and nutritional too. The most important lesson learning from this campus is how to generate a behavior change in the community people 
for to improve her living condition. That is the most important lesson learning by this, uh, from this project in Guatemala for us. With this consideration, we have right now a big responsibility. How to do a scaling up to the more people to give the same opportunity. With uh, this learning, uh, with uh, this learning and uh, lesson learning, and look to the f next five years, we have we have defined a new goals. Five thousand new family at the western on the western heartland of Guatemala, producing. Vegetable with a micro, micro irrigation system for set consumption. And the new goal is a thousand hectares below irrigation to commercial production. During the next um, step, we will incorporate a new strategy. Is to work to get hands to hands with the growers, producers by their organization. Coffee organizations, horticultural producers, and uh, handicraft producers. And we will inc uh, incorporate in these um, um, new uh, families, individual uh, and uh, scholar of, um, garden, the woman for every children, training in food and nutritional, and training to correct water management to take a safe water to drink and to produce too. The principal the challenges in this uh, new uh, s step maybe is how to put all uh, stakeholders uh, in the same weight. How to harmonize, coordinate, collaborate for to work for the same general objective, to reduce the poverty, the hungry, and the malnutrition in rural areas. All the lesson um, learning with the, from the, from the SCAMPIS project, we are systematizing side and will be incorporated in the next step in doing this, uh, we hope to contribute a uh, means um, to reduce the poverty in Guatemala, Western Highlands. Thank you very much. <laughs> if, if you have any question. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Grace Mwewa from Kenya. Uh, though we came and found that the first uh, um, uh, person who was giving out the um, introduction of the school pupils, how they do the work, was uh, that he was trying to say it's very difficult to work with the students. But I endeavor with him. To work with the students is the most enjoyable kind of job, although it depends where you are coming from, the way they were brought up, up with the foundation. The foundation with the young uh, children is that they get what the teacher is telling them. When you look at them there, each one of them is raising up their hands. That means they understand what they are doing. I'm a trained teacher. And um, what they are being told by the teacher is they are following. And mine is to say that where we are coming from, back Kenya, 
um, with the Water Trust Fund. It is difficult uh, to have such uh, students in our country to work like that. Because in our country, we don't have rivers and water enough to produce what is happening. Our country is a bit dry. Our country, we don't have technology, the one I'm seeing today. And it means the years to come, each one of them, although they are very little, in each family, they will have a person who will at least have a technology and a method for that particular family. And because the families are many, if you are doing that in your country, each country will produce enough food for the people. My question is, whoever, when you go back, I'm 100%, my question is for these children to make sure that they care what the teacher is saying so that we, we can learn from you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, other questions? I think we all agree that you know the future belongs to the younger generation. So as, as if we can teach them the right things, so the world will be different and better. Okay, my name is Jean Marie. I come from Waternet uh, in Zimbabwe. We are a capacity building network. And from what uh, we've been seeing since this morning, I was just wondering if uh, you are thinking of formalizing this capacity building approach. Because from what I'm seeing, we have identified groups which are being trained on specific technologies. But I was wondering if you are pushing this process into things like curriculum, then uh, would have a long-term sort of uh, impact and we might end up uh, reaching even other groups. I don't know if uh, under this initiative you are thinking of incorporating such approach in curriculum, both at undergraduate or postgraduate level. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And then we'll. Good morning. My name is Essa Nilsson, and I work at CEDA headquarters here at Stockholm. I just, I'm just curious about this technology. Uh, how does it work, and how does it save water? And is the water, how is it collected? Uh, where does it come from? Is it uh, totally collected from rainwater, or, or do you also depend on, on? Um, Groundwater. How does it work? Just a few words on how it works. Okay. Um, just bear with me. Okay. So, why don't you start with the water one, so so everybody is on the same page, and then we go to the uh, the scaling up question on the curriculum. Okay. And the first, uh, thank you for your comments. And uh, how to do to incorporate in a national curriculum uh, this, uh, we are working in, 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 in this, together with the uh, Education of Ministry of Guatemala. We have right now two, 200 schools working with the same methodology. Because we have, we have um, 15 years working with education with uh, the same the methodology learning by doing, training to the teachers, organizing the community and the parents and the children. Uh, the children organized in each uh, school, um, manage, management the, this uh, project below the food security is one of the, is, is the, the, the last, uh, the last uh, issue incorporated in our project in our program of education, like a formal education, it's especially in a coffee, coffee uh, growers and schools. But, but uh, in, our, uh, in our experience, we, we designed the materials, uh, we uh, val val validate, that is correct? Validate all the materials and methodology and after we take a fully com uh, complete, uh, uh, we, we can give to ministry like a um, support or contribution, like a contribution, the coffee 
Coffee Foundation for Rural Development to Guatemala. That's uh, clear. Okay, the, the other one is uh, uh, the... How, how, does this thing, how does the microirrigation work? So where do you get the water? Is, you, is it collected from rain? Do you have uh, sources of water? The, the, we, we have the di different uh, sources. Uh, rain is one, and the uh, well, is well, and the, uh, from the river, a small uh, river, uh, they need to, to walk uh, some ones and meters to to pick up uh, water for to put uh, on this uh, bag but, but we have a different uh, a kit in Guatemala because um, we we were looking about uh, um, different options in the market uh, uh, in Guatemala, we have only five uh, suppliers, and we talk with uh, each, and we invite her to design a specific uh, a kit to uh, to use in a small areas, uh, 50 square meters or at 100 meters. No, no, okay, 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 okay. Um, this uh, technology is very easy for to use. You don't need uh, uh, electricity because uh, this, um, uh, the, the function of this is below the, uh, below pressure, that's correct, below pressure, you need only to elevate one uh, meter and the, the, the water and then by the gravity, uh, the water moves and you need only to move, the, to, to put the water inside and to move the, the this uh, type, taps, taps, and to take the time. Is the water pumped into those containers or is it really necessary? We'll see it later on, I guess. Okay. Okay, yeah, we, we have the, <laughs> the other examples. Yeah. Well, very quickly, then if you want, I can give you more information. Because in each country has been different, but in the three countries, there has been micro-irrigation uh, kit. Um, this technology is composed by one part where you put water, an amount of water. It can be a bag or a tank, and it can have different size, very small or very big, depending on uh, <coughs> the size of the land. And uh, mm, in the three countries, you have always 100 square meters, but in, uh, in, in one like in, in, in India, they decided to also have 20 square meters, so very small gardens, and uh, so we, you, we ha you have 20 square meter, 50 square meter, or 100 square meter can, that can be irrigated easily with this uh, type of technology because the gravity pressure and the amount of water is enough to irrigate that size of land. So you just have to fill manually the the bag. In uh, Madagascar, in India, for example, they also have the availability of pedal pump. So many farmers decided to buy a pedal pump and they use a pedal pump to take the water from a, ri a river a little, little bit more far and they pump the water directly into the micro irrigation kit. So they use it in a complementary way or they have directly the pump to irrigate. If they have enough water, they irrigate directly with a pedal pump. And uh, of course, it's worth saving this because when you irrigate the vegetable directly at the roof, you don't inundate all the plot, so you just give the right quantity of water. And uh, in that way, the, the, the plant grow much more uh, healthy and 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 big and quicker also because doesn't have because normally if you irrigate manually you ha you put uh, one day a lot of water and maybe the day after you don't irrigate at all 
in, instead with this, you keep constant irrigation every day or maybe two, t two times per day. And also you irrigate the, the plant directly at the roof, uh, at the <laughs> roots. And so you um, as have less diseases of the plant because they're not wet. So you uh, also have this. And also the soil fertility is preserved because the water goes di directly inside and uh, doesn't wash all the, the, the soil of all the nutrient away every time uh, when you inundate the land. In fact, here, I think you see, you see the pump up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then that's how they, they get the water. How much does it cost? How much does a kit cost? Uh, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, and you put the other, the principal uh, pipe. 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 pipe, pipe, and this uh, in each uh, in uh, areas. I don't know where plot? it's plot, uh, plot, road. road. You, know, road. road. you, you, you connected every one of this uh, trip. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Larson. I'm from Accenture. And you mentioned earlier that the a problem you're going to face in scaling up will be um, in, in harmonizing your stakeholders to go towards a common goal. So I was wondering how will you apply your lessons learned in stakeholder management in your first phase to your second phase and what unique challenges do you think you'll face in the second phase? Uh, right now we have uh, we establish a um, um, consor consortium mm -hmm. consortium when we involucrate the partners the, the like a partners the small producers organized by cooperative they are part of the next project because we are working with their family their producers for to to take the the empowerment and engage mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah we have different institutions this oh, um, we are uh, um, involucrating a um, national bank for to take someone's uh, um, uh, credit if it is necessary and um, the the suppliers too the producers um, one problem of um, the the agricultural ministry Yes, 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 yes. There are new stakeholders. They are? You have Dennis Nuevo? I have new stakeholders. Who are they? Who are your new stakeholders? Yes, this cooperative horticultural producers, for example. The last new are handicraft producers. Okay. And new coffee producers too. Yes, ma'am, I'll come to you. Yes, thank you very much for your uh, interesting story. Uh, my name is Jaap Evers. I'm from Meta Meta, uh, consultancy in the water sector in the Netherlands. Um, I was wondering, as we are speaking about um, scaling up this technology, what would be the rate of return of the investment a farmer would make? You say that a kit costs about, I thought, 80 
but I don't know, 80 what? 80 US 80 dollars? dollars? 80 dollars. For instance, I, ha I am a farmer and I have um, 100 square meters of uh, land and I'm able to invest in the first 50 uh, square meters for a, a, a kit of this uh, micro irrigation. How many years would that mean to me to have refunded my investment and for me to be able to also do that other 50 square meters that I have? So what's the re rate of return? Does that take me one season of growing? Does it take me two uh, seasons or one year or three years? Maybe this is my, it's more. Well, okay, so hold on, hold on to that question. Hold on to that question. Elisabeth van den Nagel from Germ Development Corporation. I think my question goes into the same direction a little bit, not the rate of return for a single farm, but also for upscaling. Can you observe already that people who are not participating in the project, but who see what's going on, who see the beneficial effects of the project, that they are going for themselves to buy the kits? Self-adoption of the innovation? Thank you. Okay. You want to take? Sorry. Okay. Um, in terms of rate of, um, return, uh, we have been calculating more or less depending on what they are producing. For example, uh, we found out that if you cultivate one plo 100 square meters with tomato in uh, four week times, uh, you will uh, have enough quantity of, uh, I mean, in one season, in one cropping season, uh, you will have, uh, they are earning 30 euro, uh, can, we can say 30 euro. So I mean, in one year they could fully repay the the the, uh, the technology, and this very much depends on what they are cultivating. So I mean, the the price of the te technology can be repaid uh, um, with uh, within one year of production. Of course, you don't. Uh, um, they need to have the money before, so they have to invest. So they have the problem is how to get the credit and then pay back uh, this. But I mean, is, is the, the the price of the technology is quite low, and uh, as as long as the farmers are really convinced that they can produce enough and then sell it, uh, they will be able to. Uh, they will. Uh, they will be. They are willing to to buy it. And also in Guatemala and also in the other countries, we saw that after the first piloting demonstrations, um, and already at now at the end of the of the um, of the project, there are many farmers who actually want to buy the, the the technology. So this is the reason why it's happening. The scaling up, the scaling up is nobody wanted to do to think at the scaling up at the beginning of the project. We were just implementing the project, and then. Uh, this is something that happened the last year. In the last year, in the three countries, more or less at the same time, all the three countries said, yes, now we are going for scaling up. What happened? That they saw that in the same place where they were implementing the project, there were many more farmers who wanted to really buy the technology, not having for with subsidies or for free, they were ready to invest. So the scaling up is happening only because the, there has been perceived the need of and the interest in uh, really buying it, I think. The farmers in time, they take the, the, the uh, crops or whatever they can produce to the store direct or is the government? Uh, sorry, the form in which they receive the... the ah, the where do they sell the... the when they ah, sell? The, the, at the local market. So, so well, um, I mean, we did a calculation and uh, we said, we understood how much they save it because most of the production was for their own consumption. So they saved some money for themselves and whatever they didn't consume, they, s they sold at the local market near in nearby village in the community. Directly? directly. The yes, the farmer went directly. Some case, the farmer uh, was in contact with the bigger um, intermediary, so was selling to the intermediary. is very much diversifi diversified. But often, um, most often uh, they were selling directly at the market because it's very small also quantity. Okay. Maybe we can go 
Oh, I can't. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it's okay. We were going to move to another country. No, 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 no. It's a bit of a co Tony Allen, uh, King's College London. Um, it's a bit of a controversial question, but I just raised it at this point in the morning, and perhaps you could bear it in, time, in mind for the rest of the session. Um, whenever you irrigate, you always run out of blue water. Blue water is the water you pump from the ground or divert from the river. Um, w I, this question is as much for Rudolf as for anyone. In going down this route, um, and the uncertain nature of upscaling, will it be the case that people will invest with their better lives and better um, economic conditions? Will they invest in bigger pumps? Uh, because it is the case everywhere, whether it's California, Australia, or the poorest farmers in India, wherever you irrigate, you always run out of blue water. We'll wait for Rudolf to take that after we hear from our India colleagues. So.